and welcome to the stream. So, tonight, am I even using the right? I am. Yeah, we're doing everything right. I kind of started the stream a little bit abruptly. Um, but welcome. We're actually going to be talking about something int new. H uh, hello. I'm on camera now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I felt like it was more appropriate to talk about this on camera. So today, I went and pre-ordered myself a Switch Lite. Uh, I was in the area, you know, I, I did some, some banking. I got some sushi in front of me. I'm eating the crumbs, but I did some banking. Got a new card. Got a replacement credit card and all that. Speaking of which, I'm going to put this in my wallet before you guys um, can see it and take the the three wacky digits on the back. So I'm going to put this away before it, it shows up on camera somehow. There we go. Bump the mic. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Um... And that's better. That, that just looks nicer. Barely. I mean, everything's fucking overexposed to hell and back, but yeah, it looks fine. Nice face you got there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sudo. But yeah, so I got to hold the switch light for a few minutes. Or not a few minutes, for maybe about 10 seconds. And, um, you know, the buttons felt nice. They felt nicer than the Joy-Cons, honestly. The Joy-Cons are a little bit too clicky, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, but the Switch Lite felt more like it, um, it felt more like holding it like a classic DS. The buttons did. The, um, the triggers and the shoulder buttons felt more like the Pro Controllers. Um, but the sticks were the only ones that were like, eh, this isn't very good, but whatever. It's fine. <laughs> the sticks are the sticks, it's fine. It's it's still not pocketable unless you have massive pockets, so that's annoying. Um, oh, I haven't turned off the TV. Hang on, I'm gonna turn off the TV. Um, but I want to talk more about what the Switch Lite is going to do for Nintendo. You got pretty thick pockets, pseudo. That could mean anything, so thank you for that kappa. That was real good. Um, I think the Switch Lite is kind of signifying... I think I said this before on stream, but um, I think the Switch Lite is signifying that they're moving the Switch into the portable category. Um, the Switch is very clearly going to be the successor to the 3DS, and that also means that it's not necessarily the successor to the Wii U. Right now, it's the successor to the Wii U and the 3DS, but in the future, it's only going to be the, the successor to the 3DS because it's going to more or less phase itself out of the console space. And what I mean by that is because th they're going to be using the Switch Lite more in marketing material. I just know it. They're going to be using it more when they're advertising new Pokemon games or Mario games or whatever. You're going to be seeing people using the OG Switch less and less. The newer Switch is going to sell like hotcakes. It's $200, 250 where I am. Like the Switch in Canada is $400. The Switch Lite is $250. That's a $250 saving right there. It's not only $50 less in Canada. So... It's also... No, it's $100 less. The Switch still costs, like, $300 in the U.S. It's only $50 less where, you, where you're at. I don't know. I thought, I thought the Switch still costs uh, $300. But it is, it is cheaper. And it is a more kid-friendly system. Um, but the biggest thing, the biggest reason why they're going to phase that is because you, it's not going to be able to keep up with the newer systems that are coming out. It's not. There's no way in hell. 
The new systems have like instant loading times, ray tracing technology, new hardware that you can't even get yet. They're going to sell at a major loss. Like the Nintendo's going to have to release some kind of Switch Pro just to keep the thing relevant. And I don't know if they want to do that. I think they might just want to make a new system. As weird as it sounds, I think we're going to see the next generation of Switch very soon. But that also means that, to keep people happy, the Switch can't go obsolete quite yet. You prefer your OG Switch? Here's the thing. The OG Switch is probably gonna become... The OG Switch and the Switch Lite are probably gonna become like the 3DS line. And then Nintendo, when the next generation happens, maybe a year into the generation, Nintendo is gonna have their new Switch or whatever with Breath of the Wild 2 coming out on it, Mario Odyssey 2, whatever the hell's on it. And... That thing might be another Switch. You know, it might straight up be Switch 2, for all I know. I don't know what the next system Nintendo's making is gonna be. But... Mario Maker 3? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, probably, honestly, I don't know. Maybe they'll just port Mario Maker 2. <laughs> It'll be a, a, a Switch Wii U port situation all over again. Um, but I'm thinking to myself, and there's no way, like, there's no way they're going to be able to keep up with the next generation, but there's also no real way they could just drop the Switch completely, drop support for it completely in favor of a new Switch. So what they might do is they might come out with a new, more powerful Switch that can keep up with the newer systems that's maybe more powerful than a PS4. That's thinking about, like, having a handheld that's already more powerful than the PS4 is <sighs> fucking mind-blowing. Um, but yeah, let's say that's the case, and then it'll be able to keep up, because you've already got games like Control. Um, Control just came out, and that has... On PC, it has ray tracing support, and it looks phenomenal. It looks gorgeous. Um, but it can be played on the PS4 and the Xbox One. Of course, I've heard, ray I've heard Control has issues on the base consoles, but... You know. I've also heard that the issues come from, like, a memory leak. They're not necessarily strictly performance issues. So, that, that whole Control situation is weird, but... We're getting a taste of what the Switch Pro could be in terms of like control, where you'll have a system that might not be able to do ray tracing, might not be able to have the super ultra fast loading times like the PS5 or whatever. Um, but it's able to run those games, barely. It's like the Switch now where, you know, it's got Doom, it's got The Witcher, it's got Wolfenstein, and it's able to run those games, but, and there's a whole list of butts that you could go down. You know, a whole list of butts that you could look through. It sounds like, it sounds like Instagram. <laughs> oh, Christ. Um, but if they were to move the Switch into almost strictly handheld category, but the Switch honestly came out not too long ago, and that's what I'm saying. If they move the Switch into handheld category, people won't feel ripped off because there are still going to be games being made for the Switch. <clears throat> but there's going to be another system that has way more power to it and way more juice to it and is able to keep up with the later systems. But the old one will act like your 3DS. Your old Switch, you can play it on the TV now, but it'll act like your 3DS. It's gonna have, you know, those games on it. It's gonna have, like, the, the special remasters of whatever the hell that came out on it. It's gonna have the great games it's got. But then you got your newer system, and you've got Breath of the Wild 2 in your new system. You've got, like, Xenoblade 4 on the new system. You still play 3DS? Exactly. Yeah, I still play... My, I still pull out my 3DS every now and again because of, like... Because of Ocarina of Time 3D or Majora's Mask 3D. What, what else do I have? Like Rayman 3D. I was I first played Rayman 2 on the 3DS. I didn't even know it was a sequel. It just, you know. It's just a thing. Like the 3DS is a lot of great games. It's got some of the best Pokemon games on it. Um, <clears throat> it's got every, <laughs> every DS game, which is nuts. Um, 
but the new system is if it's going to be like a switch 2 and you're going to be it's going to have the same features you can dock it and undock it it's got the joy cons and all that um then they're going to have to do something new with it they, they might continue nintendo switch online let's say switch 2 comes out and it still uses Nintendo Switch Online, or maybe a slightly rebranded version of it that uses all the same framework and all the same licensing garbage, and you've got Switch Online, SNES, and NES games. Then they move up to N64 games, and now, with that extra power, they have the leverage to do pretty flawless GameCube emulation. Nintendo Stay? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that's the next system, the Nintendo Stay. Um, but that's my thoughts on it. Honestly, I think the Switch is going to move into the 3DS category, you know, or 3DS type category where it fits squarely into that Game Boy line, the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, DS, 3DS. It fits into that family nicely after a while, even though right now it seems to be fitting into the family of the NES, SNES, GameCube, Wii, Wii U, all that. It's in, a, it's in a decent enough position to where it can comfortably move, it can like comfortably move markets wherever it needs to for people to still feel like their purchase was justified. And yeah, I think the Switch will eventually turn into, it will die, but I hope, but I wasn't hoping so soon. It's inevitable, I think. I think it's inevitable that like, like the, like the new consoles are apparently going to be capable of crazy shit. Like, literal instant loading times. They're going to be able to do open world games like you've never seen before at 4K 60 FPS. This anemic little handheld can't keep up, and there's no way Nintendo is going to be content just making handheld games. And then making handheld versions of PS4 games. That's not, that's not good enough, I think, for Nintendo. As good as, like, a massive Breath of the Wild 2 could be, it's not enough. Um, and I think a lot of the improvements that could make Breath of, like, games like Breath of the Wild 2 better, Mario Odyssey 2 better, they could be, like, technical improvements. Um, who knows? And again, it's possible that the Switch, as it stands right now, just does not have the power to run stuff like like GameCube games. So they'd have to continue this, virt this virtual console, as I'm just going to keep calling it, branding the Nintendo Switch Online to the next console. Mario Caribbean? I don't know what that... I don't understand that joke. But yeah. So that's my thoughts. I hope the next system won't completely make the Switch obsolete, and it'll just sort of squarely move the Switch and that library of games into the handheld market, rather than hybrid market. And you might not be able to... You might not be able to not upgrade, but for people who bought a Switch at launch, you won't be too ripped off because you're still getting your use out of it and you're still getting a decent number of games and, you know, you've got fucking an unbelievable library of games right now. Fucking Breath of the Wild, Mario, Witcher, Doom, Doom Eternal, <laughs> uh, The Outer World. It's like so, so many massive games. Yeah, NES games. Everybody loves NES games. Ah. Oh. They're just the, the greatest, it's just the best example of top-tier game design ever. I, I, I love my NES games so dearly. I jerk off with an NES controller-shaped fleshlight every night. I, lo <laughs> I love NES. Okay, I'm going to move on before I keep rambling too much. Um, yeah.